Let's talk about some of the best ways we can protect ourselves against the Blue Keep vulnerability that attacks our terminal services using the remote desktop protocol and a vulnerability in Windows. So some of the best protections we can have is to start out with using the firewall to block access. And I've got here an access list that you can see the syntax where it says permit TCP any. So that means that anybody from the outside can come in and go after our server on port 3389, which is the default port for remote desktop services. So what I've done here is I've, I've edited the access list to say permit TCP any host, and I've locked it down to a single IP address. So only one public IP from the outside can get in to our internal server. You don't need to make any changes to any static or NAT settings. This is all, the only setting you need to change in the access list to lock that down. Now, if you're not using a Cisco firewall, you ha probably have something very similar where you can just take the any portion out of the source and replace it with a single IP or just the IPs that you know for sure should have access. Of course, we want to make sure that we patch all of our RDP servers with the CVE patch. And here's the link to it right here, uh, the CVE-2019-0708 patch is what you want. I'll show you what it looks like on the Microsoft website. And here it is on the Microsoft website. We see Windows 7 patches, 2008 patches, 2008R2, etc. We've got some more ways to protect your servers and your network from Blue Keep. A lot of people say to obfuscate ports to other than 3389. So basically what that means is you can set your server to listen on other ports besides 3389 for the remote desktop protocol. However, it's not necessarily the best advice uh, because BlueKeep will go in and scan all your ports from 3000 to 5000. And if you want to try a port outside of that range, that's certainly fine. Uh, sometimes you may have issues trying to get that to work outside those the normal 3000 to 5000 range. But it is certainly an option since as of this time, BlueKeep only scans those ports. You can set up monitoring and alerting on a firewall and also your server. And this is a good idea to let you know when a certain amount of packets are trying to get through on ports 3000 through 5000. Then you'll know to block whatever IP address or IP block coming uh, after your, your uh, firewall and your servers. Now you can do that using your firewall. That's pretty simple. It's all automatically built into your firewall to set that up. However, on a server, it's not quite so simple, especially a Windows server. So what you can do is either use System Center Operations Manager, uh, which does have a cost, and you do have to install it locally on your network. Now, if you do have a lynda.com or LinkedIn Learning account, I do have a course on System Center Operation Manager that will show you how to do this. The other thing you can use is Advanced Threat Analytics from Microsoft, which is a cloud product, and you pay per device that you have on there. And I also have another course on LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn Learning as well as Linda on that as well. And there's other third-party products. These uh, two that I'm talking about here come from Microsoft, but there's other third-party products out there that you can take a look to notify you if you are getting hit on those ports. So why do you care about it if they get hit on the server if you're blocking it at the firewall? Well, that's because if someone's computer on the inside of your network gets hacked, then they can use BlueKeep against your server from the inside. So you definitely want to monitor that information. A product I like to use uh, is now a Cisco-owned product, but uh, it's called Duo Two-Factor Authentication, and it does work with remote desktop protocol internally. So it would require that you have, say, a smartphone, for instance, get a uh, an alert or a text with a code when you go to try to log in to that server. Uh, another thing you can do is close the remote desktop port externally and use two-factor authentication. So instead of having a remote desktop protocol on 3389 or any of those ports, uh, 3000 through 5000, etc., you can just close them all and instead use two-factor authentication VPN so you are virtually on the inside of your network and then you can go ahead and connect to your remote desktop server. Now that'll help from the outside, but you still wanna have two-factor authentication on the inside as well. And you wanna turn on network level authentication. This is a really simple thing to do if you have not done anything else besides patching your servers, of course, uh, then you can do this in under 30 seconds. I'm gonna show you right now. 
we're on a Windows server, uh, but the same type of procedure also works on a desktop as well, since we know the desktops are also vulnerable. So we're going to go to System inside Control Panel. And then we're going to go to Remote Settings here at the top left. And we see that Remote Desktop is allowed. Now, of course, you can turn it off and just not use it if you're not needing it. But if you do need it, what you want to do is check this box here that says Allow Connections Only from Computers Running the Network Level Authentication. So you're going to have to have an account on that computer in order to be able to, uh, to log into it. And you can click Select Users. And you want to make sure it doesn't say Everyone or All Domain Users. You want to lock this down to the Remote Desktop Users group or to just individual users. And you, you do that simply by going to the Add button here and then uh, you can find the, the people that you want. Now, in this case, we have a domain controller, so we're, we can look for a lot of different uh, user accounts that we can add or groups. If you're doing this on a workstation, then you would just have to use local users uh, where it says locations, and you would choose just that local uh, computer itself. But in our case, like I said, we do have that. So for instance, I can type in Sally's name, click OK, and now only Sally and the administrator have remote access into the server. It's not going to be set to everyone. So the combination of adding network level authentication and the users will definitely protect you against BlueKeep. BlueKeep does keep evolving, so make sure you check back with uh, Microsoft at technet.com and double check that there are no new ways to protect yourself against the BlueKeep vulnerability on Windows desktops and servers.